Hello, welcome back to the channel. Toolkit RC has a new charger out called the M7. They say this little thing can do 200 watts at 10 amps. Let's find out. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Toolkit RC, who sent me this little M7 for review. I'll have links in the description back to Toolkit RC if you'd like to learn more about this charger, and I'll have affiliate links in the description in case you'd like to pick one up for yourself. Thanks a lot to Toolkit RC for sending this demo unit out. Let's get into it. In order to validate the 200 watts of 10 amps claim, I've got a real simple setup. I've got two 5-cell batteries that are connected in parallel to the Toolkit RC via a parallel board, and I'll be using a 6-cell 5000 as the power source. With the two 5-cell batteries taking a 10 amp charge at 19 volts, that should get us real close to the 200 watts specified by the charger. To set up the charge, we'll simply press on the jog dial, and then we'll scroll to charge current, and we need to set that to 10 amps. There we go and let's start it all right everything looks good so far 19.4 volts at 10 amps that gives us a wattage of 194 that's about as close as i'm going to be able to get you until we get to 20 volts on these batteries The little cooling fan inside the M7 kicked on, but it's very quiet, not loud at all. There are a couple of different information screens you can see on the charger by using the scroll wheel. So I'll scroll right and we see 3.87, 3.88, that's my cell voltage for balancing. That shows us how we're doing on our balance charge. And then if you scroll right again, there's a resistance screen. I think that comes on at the end of the charge. It's been charging for 440 milliamp hours at this point and that's not resolved yet. So it'll probably come on at the end of the charge. And then the main information screen that shows the status of the charger, the peak voltage, the amperage, and the current watts. Along the top of the screen, you can see the power input value at 22.7 volts. So far, we've used 11 watt hours out of that power source, and we see an internal temperature on the hardware at 57.2. And there's even a little fan icon to let you know that fan is spinning. And then at the main body, you've got the current voltage of the batteries, the amp draw, the time of the charge, and the milliamp hours that you've put into the batteries. Very effective, very well laid out, easy to read. The main information is there, and that's what I like about this. I think Toolkit RC is starting to get the plot. I've reviewed other Toolkit RC products where they put a lot of information on the screen, but some of the most useful information is actually hard to read. This screen layout is just right. I can see exactly what I want to know in terms of my main pack voltage, how many milliamp hours I've put in, and the balanced state of my batteries. And then if I want summary information, I can see the status of the charger, voltage, amperage, configuration, and the wattage being used by the charger at that point in time. So very well done. It's very well laid out. I often get questions about output voltage on these types of devices, so I'm going to go ahead and put my multimeter on two of the pins on the, on the parallel board just to give you a look at the output and see how that matches on the screen. So my fluke meter is showing 19.7 volts and the screen is showing 19.63. It's off about a tenth of a volt it looks like. Well, that test is sufficient for me. I've got 19.7 volts at 10 amps. We're at 197 watts. We're within 2.8 watts of the peak. I'd say that's successful. With our charge test complete, I'd like to show you another very cool feature of the Toolkit RC M7. If you use this as a field charger and you have a power supply battery like a 6L5000 like I'm using, you may go flying and decide, you know, I don't want to use this battery, I want to use something else. So this has the ability of putting a charge from one set of batteries back into your... So this device through regenerative discharging has the ability to take a charge from a charge cell and put it back into your power supply. So let me show you how to do that. You start by pressing the jog dial and scroll up to the mode option and change it from charge to, we'll use storage. You can also use discharge, but I'm going to use storage because I want to imagine that I'm just putting this battery in a storage state to put it away. And then under discharge mode, you have to hit recycle. Now, by default, that option is not available because they don't want you taking your flight packs and trying to recharge an AC power supply. To make sure you have access to the recycle option, exit the mode settings long press on the jog dial, and then under input settings, you want to change the power type from the factory default of adapter to battery. And by doing that, you'll gain access to the recycle option. We'll cover the rest of those settings later, but for now, I just want to show you the regen discharge. So back in our mode settings, 
We'll set our end voltage to 3.8. For the discharge current, set the amperage to a value that makes your source battery happy. In my case, it's a 6L5000. I want to charge this at 1C, and that's the way you have to think about it. It's almost like we're using these two on the right to charge this battery now. So the idea is to set your amperage at a value that makes your receiving battery happy. In my case, I'm going to use a discharge current of 5 amps because I have a 6L5000. So here we go start and it will do that all the way down to 3.8 volts per cell at 5 amps you can tell on the screen right away this is different because it's a negative 5 amps on the screen that means we're going that direction with our amperage just like when we're charging you can use the jog dial and scroll right to get additional information so you can see my cells are about 3.86 and remember we have it set to go down to 3.8 there's that resistance measurement I was looking for earlier. It's curious I don't see values for the other cells. I see zero and zero for four and five. Well, that's it. I just wanted to make sure you saw the regen function and understood how it works. So if you are using this as a field charger and using a battery as your supply, you can put your energy back from your flight packs into your supply battery. I know I've got a large number of weight junkies on this channel, so let's get it on the scale first. And there we go, 88 grams. Measurement wise, we're at about 72 and a half millimeters long by 51 millimeters wide by about 26 millimeters tall. Let's take a quick look at the physical characteristics of the Toolkit M7. On the left hand side, you've got an XT60 with two servo connectors. One is input, one is output. The input voltage for this charger is 7 to 28 volts, so 2 cell all the way up to 6 cell. On the right hand side, you've got the balance connector supporting up to 6 cell batteries with an XT60 out and of course the jog wheel. On the bottom, there's just a fan and there's also a couple little legs that'll help give you a better look at things when it's on the desktop. On the front of the charger, there's a jog dial, which we've used already, and a function button or an exit button. Now for a look at system settings. From the main boot screen, just long press the jog dial and you'll be greeted with the setup screen. The very first option is input settings. This is where we were earlier when we selected our input source. And they do have power types too. So you can press this and say I have two different input styles. So you can define those and then use those later for quick selections. So in this case, you can see P2 is set up as an adapter supporting max power of 350 watts, max current of 12 amps. So if you are using a power supply like the P200, which I just recently reviewed, link in the description, you can come down and set the power limit to match your power supply. In the case of the P200, that would be 200 watts. And then we can also change the max current to also match the power supply, in that case, 10 amps. Under security settings, you can set internal temperature cutoffs, external temperature cutoffs, charging time, safe capacity, meaning how much power you're putting back into the batteries you're charging, for continuous work, I like to leave that one off. It's a neat function if you know exactly what you're doing, but bottom line is as soon as you unplug one battery, you plug in another one and it goes right back to work. So it's a neat function if you're careful with it, but for me, I'll just leave that off and hit start. Under work completed, the options are trickle and end. If you want the charger to immediately cease charging after it reaches the initial balance point, you can turn that off. If you want it to go ahead and trickle and find balance, you can leave it on trickle charge. For battery selection, by turning this on, you're prompted each time you connect for a battery. If you use this, say, in the field for only 3-cell 2200s, and that's 95% of your charging, I'd leave that off. If you're going to use it for a variety of different batteries, say, on a desk, you might want to turn that on, and that way you're prompted to configure your battery before you start charging. For backlight options, you can go from 10 all the way down to 1, which gets very dim, and then I'll leave it set at 10 for the demo. There's a buzzer option. I have mine turned off because I just don't like the beeper on these things. But if you'd like to have a beeper, you can do that. I like mine off on this particular use case. And then for language, you've got English, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, and a handful of Asian languages that I just don't know how to read, so I'm not sure what they are. But maybe Chinese, maybe some Japanese, Korean maybe. I, I'm just not sure. Thai. Anyway, I apologize, but I can't recognize this, this format, so I just don't know what that says. 
Okay, for my use case, I'll set it for English. Theme style, you have options for dark and light. So I like the dark option. I think it looks really good on this charger and it's very contrasty and pleasing to the eye. And then if you long press this button, that'll bring you back to the defaults for the factory setup. That's it for the setup options. Let's see what other tricks this little guy has up its sleeve. Toolkit RC has a very interesting recipe for products these days because they stuff a lot of functionality into their electronics. For example, this M7 also supports USB charging at 5 volts and up to 2 amps. It supports PWM measurements and outputs. It supports SBUS measurements and outputs. It supports the ability to test an ESC and a motor. And it also has a built-in power supply that goes from 5 to 30 volts and all the way up to 10 amps. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at how these features work. First up is the USB test. I've plugged in a GoPro Hero 5 via USB to a USB meter on the port on the M7. And you can see right now I'm delivering 4.8 volts at about 1 amp. Okay, let's take a look at some of the software options on the Toolkit M7. From the main screen, if you long press the function button, you'll be greeted with an accessibility menu. The very first option there is called measure resistance. So if you click on that with a battery connected, like I have a 4Cell 4000 right now, and give it just a moment, it'll measure your resistance on the battery and show you, in my case, I've got one, nine, two, and eight milliohms. I'm not 100% sure I believe that's accurate because this is a brand new battery and it feels like it's in excellent condition. So that's a pretty large gap. I'd like to test that on another device just to see. So I'm not sure how much I trust that. I'll get back to you on that one. The next software feature is measure signal. You get to that by long pressing the function button for the main screen and then click on measure signal. And there's a couple of different options here, including PWM, PPM, and SBUS. I can show you PWM and SBUS because I have those receivers. I do not have a PPM receiver, so I can't show you that one. We'll do this by taking a PWM receiver like this R168 from RadioMaster. And remember, on the left-hand side, there are a couple of signal connections. The one closest to the battery is input, and that's what we're measuring. So we'll make that connection with the ground pin up top. So the black ground goes up top. The signal wire goes down on the bottom. This receiver is already bound to my radio, so from the measurement screen, all we have to do is press on PWM, and you can see pulse width measurements flashing back and forth on the M7. I'm moving the particular control surface back and forth, and I'm not sure if the video is picking it up, but I have a feeling it's gonna overscan and not look quite right, but this, the pulse width is shown right here on this bar on the left, and you can see that one opening and closing as I move the aileron stick. The numbers are flashing by very fast, so I'm not real thrilled about that because they're moving too quick to get any understanding of what's happening. Like I move the stick all the way to the left, I'd like to see 998 as a locked in value and I can. It's just flashing by too fast. And I don't see any options when I hit escape to go in and be able to change these refresh rates. So there's no option to make that stop but you do see the bar moving back and forth, and that does give you an indication that the M7 is reading PWM from this receiver. Okay, that's it for PWM. We'll switch over to SBUS, which is a little bit of a different story. Okay, I've got my RadioMaster R161 receiver connected to the input signal port on the M7, and I've got SBUS selected for signal measurement, and the only thing left to do is press the jog dial to activate the signal measurement. And I'll move the ailerons first. You can see the SBUS bar moving left and right on my radio right here, and it's moving left and right with SBUS right there. This is a really handy feature if you're into SBUS and you're using things like flight computers and you have to troubleshoot connectivity problems. This is a very helpful tool to help you understand if your SBUS signal is making it into your flight controller. My only real gripe about this is that you can see on my radio, I'm showing 988 microseconds of output, and on the M7, it's showing me 172. I don't even know what that 172 is. I would like it in the Toolkit M7 if they would update the firmware to show microsecond output matching the radio. So as I move all the way to the right, my radio says 2012, and on this monitor, it says 1810. When I move all the way to the left, my radio says 988, and on the M7, it shows 172. I don't even know what that number is. But the functionality is there because I can see movement on the channel, and that's the main thing I'm using this for. I'm not using it to calibrate my radio. I just want to see if it's working. And I can tell there's my elevator. It is working. 
Here's my throttle, that's working, and my rudder on channel four, that's working. And then finally, I assign channels five through 16 to my left slider. So I'll move the left slider and you can see five through eight on this screen moving back and forth, which is great. Now we'll use the jog dial to scroll over to channels nine through 16 and I'll continue moving that slider and you can see the S plus output working just fine there. I'll be honest with you guys, that's one of my favorite features of these toolkit products is the ability to see what's going on with SBUS. Very valuable troubleshooting tool. Again, I'll remind you the toolkit M7 has the ability to monitor PPM. I just don't have a PPM receiver to show you. The next software feature is signal output. I've got a standard PWM servo. I'm going to connect it to the M7 on the left hand side. Now remember what I said earlier, there are two servo ports over here. There's an input and an output. This time, since we're running the servo on output, we need to connect our lead to the output side. We'll press the jog dial under signal output. I'll have PWM selected as my option. We'll click that and turn it on. And then for mode, we'll just change that from manual to auto. And you can see the servo cycling back and forth. And this is what I'm talking about with pulse width. You know they're aware of it because they've got a range of 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds. That's the pulse width that you normally see on a radio. You can speed the mode up by selecting Auto 2 and Auto 3. You can also set a manual pulse width by going into manual mode and then scrolling down to the width and selecting whatever value you want. And as you can see, as I scroll the jog dial, the servo is moving along with me. Okay, that's PWM output. The next feature of the M7 is the ESC test. Now, I had to change the battery to a 3-cell battery because there is no output voltage filtering going from left to right during an ESC test. So make sure you only use a power source that's compatible with your ESC. In my case, the ESC that I had handy is a two cell to four cell. So that's why I had to switch to a three cell battery. To set up an ESC test, you connect your servo lead to the output port on the left hand side. Make sure you're on the output port. And on the output side, I made myself this little XT60 back to back connector so I can plug that into the M7 and then my ESC plugs into that. With that done, you can get your motor and press on the ESC test and notice the output voltage is 11.4 at zero amps. So all we have to do is press on the jog dial to highlight the pulse width that we're sending out. And right now it says 1000. I'm going to increase that and you'll hear the ESC beep. And then we can spin it up just like it was on our plane. There you go. There's the ESC test on the M7. To back out of that, hit the exit button. The last feature we'll check is the power output feature. So we'll get to that by long pressing the function button, scrolling down to power. And then we'll select an output voltage of, I don't know, let's try 6.6 .6 and I'll just leave the amperage where, it's, where it sits and we'll hit start. And then I'll just turn on my meter and we're reading 6.6 .6 on the screen and 6.64 .6 on the multimeter. So it's pretty close, pretty close. Okay, that wraps up my first look at the Toolkit RC M7 charger. I kind of like it. You know, it's a tiny little charger and it's got a lot of power, 200 watts with a great deal of functionality for building models. I hauled around the M8S all the time and this is very similar to the M8S, but even a little bit smaller. Very competent little device. I'll be testing this out over the long run because I plan to keep it on my desk next to the Toolkit RC P200. I'll use it in the office when I need a quick charge or discharge on a battery while I'm tinkering. So keep an eye out on the channel for more information. If you like this kind of content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Because you stayed around until the end of the video, I have a little pro tip for you. If you take an XT60 connector like you find on a battery and just connect a servo lead to it, notice I've got my signal wire stripped. All I have connected to the XT60 are red and black, and those are to the positive and negative terminals of my XT60. I can use that to plug into the side of the Toolkit RC or my M8S. 
and now you've got a real simple power connection for receivers or any other equipment that can use a servo connection. All you've got to do now is go into the power output, set your voltage where you want it, so say 5 volts, and then hit start and you can connect this to your devices. And when you're done, you just press the button and hit stop. This is a very easy method to add and remove voltage to your components while you're working on your models. Thanks for watching to the end. Take care. Toolkit starting to get the plot, right? Couple of... And toolkit starting to get the... Everything you need to see is here on this main screen and the additional detail Everything you need to see is right here on the main screen with additional details on the scroll wheel. But I think Toolkit RC is starting to get the plot because I've... With our charge test complete, I'd like to show you another really neat feature of a... With our chart... Okay, to set up the ESC test, connect your power... To set up your EST... To set up your EST... Te... To set up an EST... Come on, John. The last test we'll run is the power output feature. You access that by not doing that.